making movies and working in the film business, the people who make movies work in the film business. Right. So you have to decide what you're going to do. Work for free. Which is I, for years and years and years, I worked in art departments and sound departments and, and acted in plays and short films, all of which I either did for free or paid for the experience. And you have to do that. It's just that kind of business. It's very competitive. You happen to be in a great city and state for it. I also wouldn't move to New York or LA. I'd stay right here. There's a ton of opportunities right here in, in the great state of Georgia. Um, and I would take advantage of those opportunities and get yourself on as an unpaid intern on a, on a shoot. If you have a specific department that you're targeting, I, locations, great. And that's something you, you, you find the, the location department of even small indie films and do it for free. You know, sign up, and be on that department for free. If you can get, and then if, and that person moves on, they'll take you with them. You know, the goal is to work into the paid positions. But what they're going to look at is your work ethic, how committed you are, how into you are, and how much shoe leather you're willing to put into it. Because you, those are valuable positions. So you've got to fight for every slice of it, and and your passion, let your passion drive you. Stay focused, and never quit. Welcome. I'm Richard Spade. I'm Rob Benedict. It's Matt Cohen. Thanks for having me. You know what else is awesome? Who? What? Said what? What? Trench coats. <laughs> Trench coats are great. They keep it dry when it rains. Ladies and gentlemen, this gentleman has done more for the trench coat industry <laughs> than perverts and rain combined. And ladies and gentlemen, it's Misha Collins! <laughs> beautiful uh, in real life as he is uh, from where you're sitting. Stop focusing on his groin. I'm gonna put this down. Yeah, please do. Misha. Misha Collins. I hear that you were, um, if Twitter is to be believed, and why would it lie to me, you, you've been out uh, getting people to register to vote here in uh, Georgia? You, you raised two important issues there. Okay. One is, uh, and most importantly, that Twitter is the best source of news. <laughs> Fact based only. In, in, in this day and age, uh, I've canceled my New York Times, obviously, subscription because I, I find that I get all of the valuable information, mostly from Donald Trump's Twitter feed. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I've been, uh, I've been out trying to get out the vote. I think it's important to vote. Uh, because I don't, know if you guys, I don't know if you guys know how this works, but. The idea is everybody goes and votes, and then whoever gets the most votes becomes the president. <laughs> um, yeah. It's that easy. I thought it was a sweepstakes. <laughs> no, a lot of times it feels like it is, but no, it's actually uh, it's called the popular vote. Ah. Uh, I don't know why they named it that, because it's sort of unpopular. A lot of people don't like to vote, but um, yeah. So, so I, I, I feel pretty passionate about it this particular election cycle, and I'm... Um, I've been fairly vocal about it. I get a lot of um, lighthearted critiques, like, uh, shut your stupid Hollywood liberal face, things like that. Okay, in fairness, I was saying that, I didn't know, I was, that was supposed to be a text. <laughs> um, and 
Yeah, fair point. Fair point. It's a valid argument. Um, Listen, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn the stage over to you, but I want to say, in all seriousness, Mark Shepard had some very passionate things to say about voting. I uh, have been following your, your work with this election season, and I admire how passionate you are about this election and how focused you are in getting people activated and, and engaged and participating in it. I, I think you are right on the money. Thank you for doing that. If you're, if you're not registered to vote, if you're not voting, if you think your vote doesn't count, you're 100% wrong. Use Misha Collins as your guide. Get out there, vote, be involved, stay involved. Um, it is, and it, we will not uh, hijack this entire panel with politics, but it is uh, particularly critical for you Georgians to vote because you are uh, right on the cusp in this election. It could go either way, so make your voice heard. Uh, <laughs> by voting. You actually have to vote silently, too. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for what you're doing, man. All right, we really appreciate it. Appreciate you guys, everybody. Okay. Great. Really? You do need it, though. I know so it's fetching on you. I think charity needs it. I think charity should have this jacket from my cosplay. And so Misha will do what he wants, and the proceeds go to Random Max, and it can become yours. You handsome stud. No one will ever look this as good as you in this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good people. How are you? Everybody having uh, an excellent weekend so far? Did you go to karaoke last night? Does that mean that you're exhausted now? <laughs> we really lost consensus on that last night. Um, it, uh, it's really lovely to be in Atlanta. I, I don't know why we haven't spent more time in Atlanta. Uh, on our convention circuit, because you people are amazing, your city is beautiful, your buildings are lovely. Um, you're welcome. We love you. I'm not familiar with your local customs. Is polygamy legal here? <laughs> Great. <laughs> It'll be a write-in ballot initiative. <laughs> interesting little experience because as some of you may have noticed I've been doing some stuffing for uh, the Clinton campaign and, uh, and, uh, and I didn't know what was in store for me when I signed up for it so when I went to Iowa I thought I was joining into rallies where there were other people who were informed about politics who were going to be talking and that I would just be like waving like <laughs> And I got there and I was like, well, these are rallies and it's just me and people are asking me policy questions. I really wish I had done my homework. Um, but I, my favorite question that I've gotten repeatedly is, uh, why should we listen to a celebrity? I'm like, you shouldn't. That's a big part of the problem. You shouldn't listen to celebrities or people who are on Celebrity Apprentice or... <laughs> <laughs> You can read the newspapers, fact check, find information. Information is your ally, is what I is what I like to think. But yes, do not listen to celebrities, except for I mean, except for me. But, <laughs> all right, tell us you what to do. Um, I like that idea um, a lot. Tell us what to do. Um, I like the notion of an entire room full of people being like that. I'm sorry, but Misha said we should. <laughs> Where should we bury the head? <laughs> oh, God. No, no, no. Oh, God. Oh, God. I have fallen 
according to the most surreal subculture. <laughs> I can't tell you how often I think to myself in the very articulate way that I do, what the fuck is happening here? <laughs> how, how is it that so many people call me dad, and what is the hidden subtext? <laughs> Unfortunately, unfortunately, I know. <laughs> so, I have a new hat, uh, which was given to us uh, by to a, a few members of the uh, cast by our first AD, um, and it says Supernatural 250 on it. We, are, we have one more day of shooting on our 250th episode of the show. Which means if you want to binge watch Supernatural, you have to quit your job. You have to drop out of school, and you have to hunker down 40 hours a week for six, and then six seven weeks. Sorry, one that and Misha's had to drop out of school. Uh, it's, yeah, I dropped out of school for charity, or to watch TV, or whatever, however you want to explain it. Um, isn't that amazing? So, um, let's have an informal dialogue here. Who has been binge-watched Supernatural? Um, And who's, who's, who has slogged through 12 years watching one episode a week? Wow. From the very beginning. From the very beginning? Yeah. Wow. So, that's interesting. So we have like this big vocal contingency uh, who have been binge watching, and then we also have the elderly. <laughs> You have been watching the show since its inception, 12 years ago. So do you, do you set aside that evening? And, yeah! and I guess, here's a, here's a smaller subset of the audience. Who has, has not used a DVR to watch Supernatural over the last 12 years? Woo! <laughs> okay, so those people that are holding their hands up right now, those are the people who have watched all of the commercials, I've been there at the moment that it airs. Wow. What? Yes, yes, Netflix. I know you kids, Netflix and chill and all that stuff, but I'm not the best of kids. So, so that means that you, every, every year, you have to like set aside your Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday night, whatever night we happen to be on that week, and you carve out that time, huh? Wow. That is awesome. Wow. No talking during Supernatural. No talking during Supernatural? That's a rule? Yeah. I just learned something. Um, you can't talk during the commercials? Our sponsors do not like to hear that. No, 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 no talking during the commercials. Um, no, pretty much, I mean, in the sort of inner sanctum of Supernatural, we have a similar rule, which is you're only allowed to talk when Mark Shepard's on the screen. And otherwise, <laughs> no talking. But we, we get it, basically the same idea. <laughs> Are we doing questions here? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm Did I ramble? I'm sorry. <laughs> How are you? I think that that's sort of situ no, it's, uh, it's sort of situational. So that depends. Like, if, if is Mark Shepard in the scene? <laughs> I don't know why I just decided I'm gonna rag on Mark today. Today is rag on Mark day. No, no, no. I would never do that. Never. Um, what? He rags on you. I know he always rags on me, so I feel like I have to fight back a little bit. He's baiting me, <laughs> like Hillary baits Trump. <laughs> I'm, I'm going, I'm going, I'm the Trump in this scenario, and I'm going for the bait. Um, so, um, you know what? Actually, um, 
it, 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 there's a bit of an ebb and flow to it. I mean, there are times when, you know, the kids have kept me up late or woken me up early and I, I'm tired and I'm essentially a glorified extra in the background of a scene. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I don't want to be doing this right now. Um, but most of the time, um, it's a thrill because it's like a dream job, you know? Um, it's, 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 it's a dream job. Um, it is remarkable to me that it, even though it's a dream job, I can ever allow myself to complain about anything. Um, it's, uh, it, it reveals a deep character flaw for, my, for me. Um, but for the most part, it is, it's a real joy. Supernatural, in particular, is a great place to go to work. Um, and I think that that's part of why the show has had the longevity that it has. There's a lot of factors that go into that. Um, but, namely one of them, that people will change their schedule and not talk during the airing of the episode. And, and um, eagerly wait for our sponsors' interludes. Um, <laughs> But um, it's been, it's just a, it's a great work environment where there's a lot of laughing and a lot of um, camaraderie and the crew works their ass off. I mean, there are so many crew members on our show that have been there since season one. And the schedule that the crew has to keep on the show is brutal. I mean, it's at least 65 hours a week plus commuting. And commuting can be, uh, it can be a bitch because we shoot on location all over the place. Um, and even though, you know, I mean, we, we, we were shooting until 4 something a.m. on Thursday and later on Friday this week. And uh, in the rain outside. And if it weren't a great group of people, people would be running for the hills. Like you can't, it, it's, it, it can be a real slog at times. Um, but we have, it's just, it really is a family on set, and so that helps mitigate any of my uh, character flaw uh, moments of, of uh, self-pity. And now you're here, so thank and you. And now I'm here, which is also a great <laughs> job, so yeah. Cool, thanks. <laughs> How's the internet? Are you still live streaming? Yeah. Is the phone upside down? <laughs> it's working. This is. <laughs> so this is for the internet to see what you guys look like. Uh, oops! I accidentally just ended the video. <laughs> and here I was critiquing your. Um, So good at this. Yeah, I know. All right. <laughs> um, Jim is wearing a, a button on his lapel <laughs> right now that is uh, it's a picture of me ripping open my as Castiel ripping open my shirt with the let the letter and I'm coming. <laughs> Which was one of those things. Um, I don't know if any of you remember. This was uh, some at some time at some point in the past. We shot this. Was it last year? Um, and <clears throat> I guess Amara had burned that into my chest. I can't remember. So so Amara had burned into my chest. I am coming. And and I was supposed in the script. It says you know Amara burns in the Castiel's chest. The letter of the words I am coming. And uh, I read it. Jerry read it, we all read it, and, like, okay. and then I got to set, and they're like, all right, here's, here we are, we're going to take off the shirt, we're going to put on the, the, the prosthetic sort of makeup stuff. And I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Ah, it says, I am coming? <laughs> so, so the idea is I rip my shirt off. 
expression on my face and I say, I am, I am, and it was one of those things, it was one of those things that didn't, like, not, it didn't dawn on anyone reading the script, like, let's reword that one. Let's tweak it a little bit. And so, and unfortunately they made, it was actually prosthetic makeup, like the letters are raised and textured and they've been made in a studio before. So we couldn't just on the fly change the spelling or the phrasing, so we had to stick with it. And luckily for me, once every year, uh, the president of Warner Brothers Television and all of, the, all of the executives come to set from, they come up from, they come up from LA and, uh, and they visit the set for a half an hour. Uh, and, uh, and so anyway, we're, we're filming the scene and I am making a mockery of this lettering on camera. I'm like, you know, like this. <laughs> oh, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm acting it out. What it says on my chest. <laughs> and there was like, there was an uncharacteristically quiet amount of non-laughter coming from <laughs> behind the monitors. And I'm like, I'm giving you guys good material here. What? They're in another, they're in, you know, on the other side of the wall, on the, looking at the monitors. But the director and, you know, the scripty and VP and first AD and all those people over there, they're not really laughing as much as I feel that they should be. <laughs> so what, what is wrong with you people? And then they, they, they yell, all right, cut, 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 cut. <laughs> and I walk around a little bit incensed. I walk around uh, off the set and back to the monitors and I see that there's the president of the network. <laughs> all of the executives. <laughs> Mortified. <laughs> Especially because we had just had this sexual harassment training. <laughs> where it had been specifically stipulated the kinds of behavior that are considered unacceptable in the workplace. And this was sort of like a poster child of that kind of behavior. Um, it's hard to talk your way out of. Um, but anyway. Needless to say, I think I sort of burned that image into their minds. Uh, I really nailed that one. <laughs> okay, whose who's turn is it? I'm really rambling today, sorry. Have we done one question? Is that, is that <laughs> Don't worry, you guys. You're de we're definitely going to get to the second question. Um, yes. Hi, Misha. I'm How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Good, thank you. Hmm, my favorite part about playing Castiel. <laughs> Sometimes I try to uh, explain this subculture to people I just meet. <laughs> They don't understand. I don't understand. Nobody, but they don't understand. We're sorry, but we're not ashamed. That's actually, that's actually a that should be in the supernatural <laughs> fandom <laughs> motto. We gotta stick with that. I'm sorry, but I'm not ashamed. So, wave your freak flag high. My favorite part about playing Cass, um, I don't know, that's a good question. There's a lot There's a lot that I like about playing Cass. I like that the character changes a lot. I like that he has superpowers, that's pretty cool. I like that there are action figures of my character. That's sort of always, that was always a, a childhood dream of mine, to actually have an action figure. Um, I think it was maybe season six or something like that, when we, when the, there was a kid that I, Castiel had been shrunk down by, by, uh, yeah. Yeah. thank you, and, um, <laughs> what is it called, the, uh, the, Antichrist, Antichrist, thank you, um, sorry, that, that word was escaping me, um, 
Subsequently, people accused me of being the Antichrist on the internet, which was kind of cool. Um, <laughs> at one point, I don't know what I was Googling, but I, it, whatever I was Googling was a question phrase, and it started with is. And so I typed in is, and then it auto-populated with, is Misha Collins the Antichrist? <laughs> Which means more than one other person that Google is Misha Collins the Antichrist. And of course, not, not that you know of is the answer. Thank you. I'll be Google for you. Um, so yeah, um, we, so we had that Castiel was shrunk down and there was like a little action figure of Castiel. And I thought, that would be amazing if someday there was actually an action figure. And there was like a whole bunch of them. I mean, there's these weird little misshapen troll turd-like dolls, but still, <laughs> it's something. It's a step in the right direction. It's not like a macho, muscle-bulging thing. It's like a little oval egg, but whatever. It's good enough for me. Thank you. Hi, Misha. Hi. I'm delayed. Um, my question is, it's my friend wanted me to ask her if she's well, so she's over there. <laughs> And the question is, if Castiel were to occupy another vessel, say, a girl, would he or she be with Dean? Um, this is a very, uh, very hypothetical question. Um, I I'm not sure, uh, it's really hard to say. It would be pretty weird, I think, for everybody involved. Um, uh, um, I think that for it to work out, um, the girl whose body Castiel had uh, occupied would have to be Dean's type. So, so I, I think if 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 Cass were to occupy the vessel of a well-endowed Asian beauty, um, I think it would be a no-brainer at that point. Thank you. Did I successfully dodge that question? Did I alienate a large swath of the audience? Great. Uh, hi. I'm so glad we're finally getting <laughs> That happens at any time someone mentions, mentions Angel Mojo. Did you, just, did you just spike the mic? She's like... For the record, in case you didn't see me jump, that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> CW actor collapses dead from the heart attack. Welcome to Atlanta. After, after the girl asks a question, and it spikes the mic. <laughs> The resurrection. Um, okay, so the uh, the answer to your question is um, <laughs> Castiel, right under his uh, Enochian warden tattoo, has a USB port. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Good. Um, I was wondering, what, is there anything you did in your past that you regret now? <laughs> no. Why would you ask that? 
is that, are you like coming forward with some uh, story of something atrocious that I did? Is that what this is? Are you confronting me with one of my most insidious past actions? I'm nervous actually. I'm, I'm like, just don't talk about that time that I. Um, yes, I'm full of regrets and self loathing if that's what you're. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, wait, you don't have to leave yet. <laughs> um, why do you ask that question? The entire fandom wants to know all about you. <laughs> yeah, no, I've never done anything bad. <laughs> um, hmm, I'm trying to think of a good story. Um, yeah, I've done bad things. <laughs> I definitely look at things, yes. I want to stop now searching at the search function for things that I've done that I regret because it's not a pretty picture of what's happening in my head right now. Um, but I'll tell you an uplifting story that I told before uh, to change the subject. Um, it's sort of about regret, uh, but not really. Um, I... Um, well, this is a regret I have, actually. This is a regret. I don't really, um, I am not spending enough time being present and attentive with my children in their, in their most formative years. And it is something that is, it's, it's present tense. Um, like I'm currently doing things that are building up future regret, I think. Um, but I'm regretting it right now. Um, Cause it's very, Childhood is very fleeting, and they're so malleable, and they're so uh, so thirsty for parental attention, and to get distracted by all of the other shiny uh, objects that, that come up in life and not pay attention to that is something that I really don't like about myself at the moment. Um, I'm trying to be better, um, but I, sometimes I'm just like, tired and grumpy and not paying attention uh, but way more than I way more than I thought that I would do uh, as a parent I thought I was gonna be great and I'm kind of shitty a lot of times. Um, <clears throat> well yeah well you do you do but my kids don't <laughs> um, we <clears throat> so speaking of, of being present um, I um, I, I, I tear up every time I tell this story. So I was uh, I was tired. I was grumpy. I think I had a little bit of a cold. We had gone to the playground, and I was telling the kids to come get in the van. And I'm not even sure where we had to go. I think I, I often I'm finding myself like, come on, hurry up, you guys, hurry up, quick dog walk, you know. And, I, and we actually don't have anywhere to go. But <laughs> um, it's just like this sort of mindset. And so I was like, come on, get in the car. We gotta go. We gotta go. And Mason goes, she says, oh, but wait, there's dandelion things with the fuzz on them, like the dandelions that are going to seed that you can blow on. And I was like, ah, oh, Mason, just get, okay, I'll be a good dad. We'll go pick these stupid fucking dandelions. <laughs> so I picked one for each myself and West and Mason, and I gave them the dandelions. I was like, now you get your dandelion and you buckle your goddamn car seat. <laughs> And they buckle their car seat buckles. I gave them the dandelions, and I blew on mine, and I wished silently to myself something, some platitude like, you know, world peace or something like that, um, with, that I put no thought into. And West, uh, he went next, and he said out loud, I wish for something that was a little more thoughtful. He wished for a, uh, I wish for a cheetah. <laughs> and then Mason was just holding hers and looking at it, and... Wes said, Mason, you have to blow on it. When you blow on it, you can make a wish. And she looked like, oh, wow, that is awesome. <laughs> because uh, at you know, her stage of development, a wish is probably, you think about, you, if you can make up a wish, you're probably gonna get that thing. Um, and so she blew on it, and she said, I wish for this. It's just like, it's so, it's such a beautiful uh, 
uh, reminder, like, this, that's a, the best moment right there. So why not wish for that? <laughs> She practiced telling that story at home, so I detached myself from it a little bit. It's kind of embarrassing. My mascara is on. Hi. Hey. Sorry to dwell on the subject of your family, but. Oh, shit. Yeah. I think I might be a little too emotionally fragile right now to talk about. Yes, go ahead. What does my family do that inspires me? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to make you cry. But... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> um, well, <clears throat> my wife, um, I, can li- I can delineate many things about her that inspire me, but one very salient attribute of Vicki is that she, uh, the part of uh, the brain that processes what's feasible, realistic, or um, possible. Uh, she is lacking that part of her. <laughs> it was damaged some, somewhere in her early childhood, and that, that doesn't function for her. So she has these grand ideas um, that are completely unfettering, and have, I think, I mean, I, I, I think that it has just been a real, um, it has strongly influenced our, our whole lives together. Um, we've been together for oh God, uh, 39 years. <laughs> That's a lie. I'm 42, I'm 42 and we did not start dating when we were three. But it's actually not that far off. I think we just had our... What's today's date? 22nd. 22nd, okay, shit. Sure. <laughs> um, the anniversary of when we met is the 24th, and, um, and we, uh, we will, I think it's our 20th. So, but it's year. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm gonna look that up. <laughs> For a while. Um, anyway, so so that's a that for, for me that is a very uh, that's an amazing quality that she has. It's very inspirational. Um, Mason is endlessly present, as I have um, described, and West is just super fiery. He just has this great fight that I love about him. Like he is kind of not afraid of any situation or challenge, um, which I like. I think I'm gonna start getting jealous of him soon, though. So. <laughs> I'm not crazy about that. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, one of my other favorite kid stories is um, <clears throat> Mason is very adorable. Um, and we were in bed, we're reading. They sort of snuggle up at bedtime for reading stories. And I said, I love you guys. I want you to stay my little babies forever. And Mason says, No, I'm going to grow up. Said, no, I want you to stay my little baby forever. No, I'm going to grow up. No, I want you to stay my little baby forever. <laughs> No, I'm gonna grow up and I'm gonna get old and I'm gonna die. <laughs> yes. Uh, what's your name? Agustina. Agustina? Agustina. Armatina? Agustina. Agustina. <laughs> okay, who's doing that? Can't take it. talking about my wife. <laughs> 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 and in supernatural when you feel of a happy ending for Castilla, what do happy you think? Happy ending for Castilla? Well, <laughs> 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 
there's a very sensible woman in the front row who's looking at me very earnestly and saying, don't, don't, don't do it. <laughs> don't, you're better than this. Don't, don't go there. Don't. And she's... Do you have a vision for your of, of what a, 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 a happy conclusion to Supernatural would be for Castiel? Actually, no. Okay. Oh, you are asking me the question, and that's why. Mm. Uh, did I dodge a bullet? No, I didn't. She could have answered the question and would have saved me from having to do it. We need the sidebar here. <laughs> Well, if they, okay, I, I think the writers might want, I mean, you don't know what the writers want. Um, at the very least, uh, look, we're talking about the ending. You know what? You and I are not getting along very well. <laughs> this has stirred up quite a bit of controversy between me and the VIPs, and I feel uncomfortable alienating our top dollar uh, clientele here, so I don't really know what to do here. Um, but I do think that, um, I think that, I, I, I think that were Castiel ever to wander into uh, a seedy massage parlor, I don't know, I, I imagine, and, and were he looking for a happy ending in that scenario? I have a feeling that he would awkwardly botch it. Because he wouldn't know the right code language to get, you know, uh, uh. you know what I mean? You do. You it sounds like you've been in that situation. Okay, let's move on. Hi. Wait, you have, you're from Australia? Okay, did you bring a translator? Because we're not going to be able to understand it. <laughs> oh, this must be so frustrating. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> You're a big fan of Chuck fan no, page? Chuck. No, um, is it the beard? <laughs> if I grew a beard, would you maybe, maybe come over to my fan picture? Um, okay. <clears throat> but we digress. Um, I know it is. Um, 
Do you notice here? In, how long? How, how long have you been here in the in North America? Uh, I think five days. Five days. Yeah. Have you noticed? Does the toilet spin twirl in the opposite direction? <laughs> I'm really jet lagged. Sorry. You're jet lagged. Okay. <laughs> You, you just want me to answer your question so you can go sit down. I get it. I, that makes sense. That makes sense. This is frustrating. I get it. I get it. I wouldn't want to be in this situation either. Some jerk just not answering the question. Diverting, talking about a toilet bowl. What the hell is that? Man, yeah, it sucks. You know what? It does. I'm sorry. Uh, but welcome to America. You know? <laughs> My, uh, somebody gave me these, which I want to point out to you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, my, wife, my wife has a pair of these at home, and she wears them around, and she cannot stop laughing while she's wearing them. One of these, it's like the funniest thing, and it never gets old for her. Anyway. Um, so, um... Your question was, uh, what's that? Your character hasn't met God yet, and I'm thinking... Are you still on this? <laughs> Unbelievable! I was, I was talking about something important. <laughs> um, so... I wonder if this is what it's like when Donald Trump puts his hand in the room. Good question. So, you have, you, your people have stamina. I love that. That's amazing. You came a long way to ask this question, and you're not going to be, you're not going to be distracted by my. Well, I can't wait to see when you meet God anymore. I think that's going to be a moment. Wait a minute. <laughs> Okay, things are coming into focus for me here. Okay, so wait a minute. You, you prefaced this entire rambling question of yours um, with, with, you binged watched in preparation. Yes. Yes. Um, is this your first convention? Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. How it's many, how? It's not going well. It's not going well. This is, uh, this is very normal hazing process that we're engaged in right now. So don't. Um, so, how many seasons have you watched? I've watched the very beginning. All the way to where? To the last, uh, second, 12 episodes. 12 episodes, second, episode. Wait, ouch, uh, ouch, ouch. 12 episodes, 12, se- second episode of the 12th yes. season? Yes. Okay, so you watched all the way through. Okay, because I thought you asked me, do I think Cass is going to meet God? No, 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 just the reaction that, you know, you have and had when you met God. Yep. Obviously, they're looking for him. Right. It was a big deal throughout the whole thing. God is an often considered big deal, yep. <laughs> fantastic. I was also asking the cast, did you guys know, from when Chuck was first introduced, did you all know that he was going to be God? Ah. <laughs> I don't know about down under, but here in America, you don't talk to people that way. So, uh, yes, so in, in season five, um, we had an inclination because uh, er, uh, Eric Kripke had created this scenario where the yeah. writer 
who created the entire universe of supernatural, um, was God-ish. It seemed like he might be God, right? And we, we saw that he was probably going in that direction because writers always think of themselves as gods. <laughs> what? Well, yes, I suppose that that was what it was because he was a writer that the writer was writing about. So yeah, I think so. I feel like we've gotten the bottom of this. <laughs> Are you gonna go back home and tell your people what it was in the interaction we had? <laughs> yeah, good. You've been an, uh, an incredible ambassador. Thank you for visiting our country. I hope you don't find our customs too strange. <laughs> Cass feels has been the most important change to his character ever since he was introduced. Ever since he was introduced? Um, <clears throat> well, I think probably Cass would answer uh, something about getting to know humanity. He has developed uh, a deep empathy for humanity in the truest sense of the word because he was actually human for a spell, but also because of his exposure and intimacy with Sam and Dean. They have become, they, Sam and Dean have, we have become replacements to him as family. Um, the angels were his brothers and sisters, but he's definitely been cast out by heaven and does not have a home there anymore. And so while he's still something of an outsider, everywhere he goes, the closest thing that he has to home and family is with the Winchesters. So I think that that, that relationship with Sam and Dean um, as proxies for humanity in general is the most important change for for Cass. So it, it is, it is, yeah, it's caused it's caused the greatest change in him because he was definitely when we first met him, he saw himself as uh, as a as a protector uh, of humans, but he was beholden to heaven, and it was almost like he, he, I think that he thought of humans as as like a security guard would think of a property that he's charged with protecting. Not, um, they, they weren't beings that he had an important uh, interplay with, you know? So I think that's a big difference. Um, also, <clears throat> you know, it's been now, now we've been watching, those of us who watch, who don't binge watch, uh, have, have been watching Castiel for nine years. And so he's gotten increasingly more, I would say, Chiseled. <laughs> Over that time, I've noticed the character is, is, as time passes, significantly more ripped. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Hi. Hi. We met earlier today, um, but my question is, what was the last lie you told? <laughs> Over the last nine years, Castiel has gotten significantly more rich. Hi. How are you? Great. My wife's still trying to calm down from the photo op. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> is actually coming from her. Okay. As we all know, Gabriel supposedly died at some <laughs> point. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I think the trickster tricked him. Yep. And you cannot convince the fandom otherwise. There's no way in hell. Well, Castiel <laughs> ever find I get, the sense, I get the sense that if I did try to convince her that, you would deck me. <laughs> so, uh, will Cass ever find Gabriel? Even by accident. Like, he's just rolling around, just rolling around like, hey, going, to, going to the sheriff, local sheriff's office with Sam and Dean and pop in. Who the fuck was that? Who the fuck was that? 
gave her. Oh, he's gone. What the hell? That would be a great motif to play out over the course of the next seven or eight seasons. Gabriel, we think somewhere in the distant background. Is that Gabriel? It's actually a really good idea. Thank you. <laughs> if you see that implemented on screen, you'll know that you were its creator. So, but you will get no royalties. <laughs> Hi. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Alicia. Hi, Alicia. Since Castiel has become more human, and even was trying to date, is there a possibility that he would date and even conceive with a woman, considering he uses his angel leg for protection? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Is, is, okay, what? Is there a possibility that Castiel would grow a family with a human woman and with the child have the angel powers or would the child be pure Jimmy DNA? What? Jimmy. Oh, God. Okay. So, I hate to school you on supernatural mythology, but it looks like I'm going to have to. If an angel copulates with a human, the spawn is a Nephilim. I'm going to spike this mic. <laughs> so, in answer to your question, um, if, if Cass were to lay, in biblical terms, uh, with a woman, and they were to use, as protection, only an angel way, <laughs> it's entirely possible that a Nephilim would be conceived, and Nephilim are very powerful beings, so, you know, could, could cause a real disturbance in the force. Use another <laughs> term that I borrow from the supernatural canon. <laughs> Thank you for that deep and probing question. Hi. Hi. Um, so, I've done Gish West the past couple of years. <laughs> All right, now we're talking. <laughs> All right, and I've seen some incredible and amazing things come out of people who do it. So I was wondering, although they've done some like great things in the community, what's the most entertaining thing you've ever seen or done? So the very first... <clears throat> submissions that came in from Gishwas was an item that I had written, which was cover yourself completely in cotton candy uh, with only your face exposed, and we must see a smearing of lipstick on your face. Um, it's basically like the carnival equivalent of being tarred and feathered. It's a, a horrific thing to ask somebody to do, cover their body with, with cotton candy. And I didn't really think it all the way through, but I guess like if you're at all sweaty, like this was summertime, if you're at all sweaty, the, the cotton candy kind of like fuses with your skin. It starts... Oh, sugar wasn't funny! I, 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 I'm sorry, I'm not sorry. <laughs> so, um, these first images came in and I just could not, I mean, it was basically like, cause, I asked people to do something disgusting and humiliating. And they did it. And I laughed and I laughed and I laughed. The images were incredible. Um, so that that one really stands out still for me. Um, it was just it was just a spectacular image. There's just one photo, and I think I actually had T-shirts made up of it, which, by the way, no one has ever worn um, because they just look disgusting. But it was this guy. It was this guy standing in his room like this, like clearly miserable beyond belief covered in pink cotton candy with red lipstick all over his face. And, you know, I know he's thinking, just take the fucking picture, just take the fucking picture. And yet, that photo brought me so much joy. Um, speaking of Gishwes, I, I want to share just one other little tidbit here, which I am very uh, excited about and proud about from this year's um, scavenger hunt. Pardon, pardon the digression. 
how to state that. So one of the items that we had the item list, and then those of you who don't know, Gishwas is like a big kind of scavenger hunt, but it's a little bit more than a scavenger hunt. But how many people have done it here? It's kind of awesome, and the stuff that people do, it's just amazing. But anyway, one of the things that we had this year, we had the list, and the list went out. We have these, we try to do a bunch of items in the scavenger hunt that get people to go out and do nice things in their communities. And so we had a bunch of those items, but we were like, oh, we're a couple days into the hunt, and it was like, ah, I feel like we're missing something. We could make a big impact. One year, we had done this thing where there was a veteran who had come back from Afghanistan, having lost both of his legs. His wife had a chronic illness. They had a child with very severe autism, and they were homeless. There was another nonprofit that was buying them a house, or building them a house. So we put in the hunt to fully furnish that house for this family. And we basically set up like a wedding registry at a Sears, and people just got things like couches, and refrigerators, and dishes, and blenders, and everything to fully furnish this house. And that was an item in the scavenger hunt. It was really awesome. But this year, we didn't have something like that. We were scratching our heads. And then Philip, who is sort of the co-operator of Gish, was with me. He was like, wait a minute. I know this guy. So we called this guy. He's a reporter who covers war photography. He's a war photographer. So he's been traveling around for years and years. He lost two legs and an arm to an IED. And he's still working as a war correspondent photographer and doing some amazing work. But he had done these stories on these families, these Syrian refugee families in Lebanon who were living in just the most dire circumstances. One family had, in particular, the mother had been tending in Syria to their little plot of vegetables in the city because they are kind of being starved out in a lot of places and was shot by a sniper in the spine and became paralyzed. And they managed to get out of Syria, but now for two years they've been living in this camp. And she's just been staring at the ceiling of her tent for two years without getting medical attention. And the kids, one of her daughters, she has a large family, one of the kids recently tried to kill themselves because she wanted the family to have enough food to feed all the other kids. Like the most heartbreaking story. And so we put it in the scavenger hunt. We didn't want to make people have to give money. So we said, get other people to donate to this cause as an item in the scavenger hunt to help this family, this one family that this photographer had identified for us. And we needed like $50,000 to take care of them, like school, clothes, medical needs, get them out of this tent for the next three years. And we ended up raising $225,000. And we, so we had to scramble, like that, that, right away we had raised enough money for that one family. And then we had to scramble to find another family, and another family, and another family. And right uh, tomorrow, or on Monday, Philip is going to be in Lebanon meeting with these families and filming them finding out, because we haven't told them yet that we have all this money for them. And that it's really going to completely change their circumstances. They are, their lives are going to completely change. And it's so awesome, it's so cool that you guys can participate in a game that has that kind of lasting impact on people. Um, so, no issues. That was good, uh, too, because we kind of nicely bookended this very somber panel with uh, discussions of political matters. So, yeah. um, thank you, guys. I, I think that your, your charity and your generosity are, are matched only by your complete disregard for Jim's uh, well-being and making him <laughs> FaceTime this whole thing for an hour and holding your phone steady, your majesty. His, his arms are trembling <laughs> right now. He's sweating profusely. Oh, please let this thing be over. He can't feel his arms at all. The good news is there's Jim's tears a... streaming down his cheeks. But you can rest easy knowing he's an unpaid volunteer. Thank you for <laughs> using Jim's time like this. Truly, Misha Collins, your charity knows no bounds. You're very good.
Good day, guys. Good what a Saturday, huh?